Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm. Today we are going to Rural King. <laughs> so we've ordered some stuff from Tartar Farm and Ranch, some feeders for our cows. We're gonna go pick those up. We're gonna talk a little bit about them. We're gonna load them up full of feed today. It's gonna be a pretty good time. We'll talk a little bit about the different options that we got. So we got two different types of bale feeders for our cattle. I wanna talk a little bit about them, tell you why we got two different types and show you the differences and we got a creep feeder for our young calves. I want to make sure I don't clip the gate on the way out here. This big uh, gooseneck trailer sometimes is a bit of a struggle to drive. So come along today as we load up some stuff from Rural King and then we'll talk to you about what we're picking up and why we're getting the things that we're getting so that we save money and that we save hay. We don't waste a valuable resource that we work so hard for on the farm. All right, woo! that pond looking pretty nice man the new pond is doing awesome a lot of folks have asked for an update you see how green the grass is on the new pond no issues whatsoever we got three inches of rain last night probably in a 45 minute period didn't run over the dam didn't do anything to the pond at all awesome so we're headed to Martinsville Virginia Martinsville Virginia is about 20 25 minutes away from the farm that's our closest rural king now this Rural King parking lot is really, really tight and I'm pulling a pretty long trailer, a gooseneck trailer, and I don't want to tear anything up. So I called up ahead of time to let them know I'm coming just to try to be nice and that way they got everything staged and I won't have to uh, run over any compact cars with the Cummins diesel. <laughs> so it's going to be a good time. We'll hopefully get a little footage of loading this thing up. Uh, it's going to be, uh, it'll probably fill up the trailer, I'm assuming, if everything's already assembled. So here's what we got, feeder, feeder, feeder. And some very nice people here at Rural King. Awesome. So I pulled over at a truck stop real quick to get myself a sandwich. I can't say how impressed I was with the folks at Rural King, man. They jumped right on this. They were super happy to meet me. I wanna encourage any of you guys, if you watch the channel, if you follow the channel, and you see me out and about, I travel the country a whole lot. If you see me, shake my hand come say hello please don't don't say i think that's stony ridge if you want to know just go woo and you'll know right away so please come and shake my hand I, I i love to meet fans of the channel it was super duper awesome i was really flattered with the treatment that i got at rural king super cool let's get this load home It home safe with all the equipment we have here so this is called a creep feeder it's for the baby cows we'll show you exactly how it works we're going to load it with feed there are two different types of round bale feeders that we have right here one round bale feeder you see right here sits on the ground it's called a bull feeder it's a very tough robust round bale feeder that you can move about the field and this round bale feeder is a cradle bale feeder so we have limited resources on the farm for hay right now so we want to utilize every tiny bit of hay we can possibly utilize right now we're taking our hay bales and we're just dumping them out on the land and unrolling them or just leaving them whole and letting the cows kind of eat it down what that does is waste a lot of hay so that's the solution to wasting hay this is the solution to a spot that you want to have some biomass added to so in other words we'll put a bale of hay inside this ring and we'll roll it to a place that needs a little more biomass once they're done eating that we'll lift it up we'll roll it we'll move it the whole precipice behind our cattle here on the farm is going to be movement a lot of movement to help restore the soil so that we get good forage good quality forage and we don't have to feed a lot of hay in the winter time that's the whole goal here so let's unload everything and we'll take it up and set it up in the field some of this requires light assembly no big deal and all this is tartar farm and ranch stuff so it's real high quality and it's all either galvanized or powder coated so in order to unload this 
we need this. This is a pallet fork attachment. I'm going to show it to you real quick because it's unique. This is from Titan Attachments. There'll be a link down in the video description. And if you want 5% off, Stony Forks is a coupon code. Let me show it to you. All right, so this is a heavy duty pallet fork attachment, much better than the one that I previously had. The other one I had, one pallet fork is down like this and the other one's up like this. So it bent out of shape. What this does is it's fully adjustable. In other words, you can lift a little tab right here and you slide your forks out to wherever you want them. Now the unique thing about this pallet fork setup is that it has a mount for bale spear. So you can put a bale spear right here. What you do is you'd widen the forks out as far as they would go and then you'd put your bale spear in. Then you'd have a set of pallet forks and a bale spear. Pretty cool. For what we're doing today, we're not gonna be using the bale spear part, but we will be setting this up where we can pick up our creep feeder. We're gonna bring the creep feeder down right here in the driveway. We're gonna load it up with feed and take it up in the field first. Like I said, some light assembly is required. This thing is bolted up. This is what keeps the big cows out of the creep feeder. And this is a feeder for the young cows and it's held together with a couple bolts here in the back. We unbolt those bolts and we roll this forward and then we bolt the block in place. That's what I'm doing. Whew. Nice. So we take our bolts and we bolt it back together up top right here. And then we'll take it up to the field after we fill it full. from a dead blow hammer down here. This has to kind of be centered up a little bit and then there's a nut and bolt that has to set in here and then we can put it all together. So I'm gonna tap on it a little bit. There we go. So this is all powder coated. That's why I'm using the rubber hammer, a dead blow hammer to do this. And then we've got a ratcheting wrench to tighten it up. Any of you guys ever catch yourself going, uh, uh. <laughs> Having a farm and a piece of property like this is being the mechanic, the plumber, the electrician, all the above. I had somebody ask me, you guys are gonna laugh, post a comment down here about this. I had a pharmacist at work ask me something that I thought, she just has such a poor understanding of what, what living in rural America is like. She asked me if I could drive a stick now she knows we got a 200 acre farm, but she asked me if I knew how to drive a stick. What? Are you kidding me? This is a pharmacist. This is a person with a doctorate. Ask me if I know how to drive a stick. Who doesn't know how to drive a stick that has farmland? You gotta drive a stick to drive a tractor, man. Goodness. I'm just tightening up everything, make sure everything's buttoned up nicely prior to taking it up into the pasture. So here's the feeder, it's all assembled. We'll take it up in the field and explain it to you a little bit. First, I've got all the feed on the back here and make a 650 pound and a thousand pound capacity. I believe I have the 650 pound capacity and basically you just unhook a little rubber stopper back here and then it slides open. It's pretty tight because cows will get into what cows can get into and they'll tear stuff up. So that opens up. And then there's a feed hopper in here that's made of plastic. And we'll load it up with the uh, cow starter food. Now what we're doing with the cattle starter is a 14% protein uh, mix with a little bit of calcium and phosphorus in here. So this will help our calves get a good start after weaning. And we've got two freshly weaned calves up there.
you can see the cows are already excited about this. This is called a creep feeder and there are four sections. One, two, three, four sections right there that the young cows can get into and the big cows can't get into. So that's what this is all about. This bar right here is removable so that you can slide it up for bigger calves or down for smaller calves. And that's what this whole setup is for to help our calves get a head start so when they're ready to wean, they're big and strong and healthy. Let's go get the other feeders. So the reason we're getting these feeders is for number one, not to waste hay. You see that on the ground right there? The donkey was peeing in it just a little bit ago. So they've got 35 acres of pasture out here and you can see there was a hay bale right there and there was a hay bale right there. What they're doing is probably wasting about a sixth of the bale on the ground. And then once it's been trampled on and peed and pooped on, the cows won't eat it anymore, the donkey won't eat it anymore, and it's just going to waste. Now it is building biologic material in the soil and there is a call for rolling our hay bales out on the land. So in bad spots where we need to build soil, it's a good idea to roll some hay out on the land. Destroying the land like this with heavy foot traffic because the cows are hanging out down here by the feeders and the waterers, that's not a good thing. So we're separating our feeders and our waterers to keep the cows from lounging and or making a mess here on the farm. So that's, that's what the goal is, moving them. We're gonna start training these cows to the electric fence very soon and we'll fence off this entire area right here and seed this and let it recover. It needs to recover. It's been beaten to death by the cows. But they're putting that good butt fertilizer that we like so much down on the land right here. So she's a ham. <laughs> Even though this area looks like a mess right now, in the springtime, it'll start to grow back. It'll recover. It'll be okay. But we don't want it to get much worse than this. If the cows are putting out butt fertilizer, then we're going to get some grass growing right here. And the goal is, again, building the land. Our waterers are right here. We're going to move our waterers all the way up to the top of the farm and separate our feeders and our waterers from each other so we don't have this lounging cow mess in the mud. I sure hate to see a third of that hay bale go to waste on the ground. It's full of grass seed and it's full of nutrients for the cows, so hopefully this area will recover just fine. Cool. <laughs> Let's say 15 minutes of light assembly. There's just three bolts and nuts in between each section right here. So we've got the ground round bale feeder all set up. Now we're gonna set up the cradle feeder. So this will come in four sections. The cradle, leg, leg, and then there's a gate that'll go right here for ease of loading your hay bale in. You'll understand once I get it flipped back over. All this is bolted together right in the center right here. And it may require a little bit of maneuvering to get your nuts and bolts in place. If you can, wear gloves while doing this because there could be some little sharp welds right in here that could get you. See what I mean? It's a little tight right here. You get on the end of this bolt and drive it through. heavy now. <laughs> Roll this guy back over. Just like so. And over here is our gate. So this gate, I'll assemble it for you real quick. Basically the gate slides into place. There are two pins that lock it in place, we slide our gate in, drop our pins back in place, and then it's good to go. So this is the heavy duty three piece round bale feeder that you can get from Tartar Farm and Ranch. I'm working on getting some coupon codes for you guys for Tartar Farm and Ranch. Don't hold me to it, but if by the time I get this video posted, we got coupons, they'll be down in the video description. Now this is the cradle feeder, and the cradle feeder is basically set up if you're feeding horses, goats, cows, 
anything that you don't want your feed to be on the ground. We don't want our feed to be on the ground, so what we'll probably do is move this cradle feeder around as we feed our cows because we don't want them to tear up this ground that we've worked so hard for. We've worked so hard to get good forage and it's still fairly sparse. So it's a new farm, it's a new place, and we're building it up. So that's what's going on here, guys. Uh, the calves, as you can see from the drone footage, well, they kind of got used to the uh, creep feeder. Everybody's trying to figure out how to get in there. I think I'm going to go raise the bar on the creep feeder. That way the bigger calves can get in. But this will be super duper handy so we're not wasting our hay and the donkey can't get in that and pee on it. It's important. Very important. Well folks, I hope you got your livestock feeder education for the day. So we got the creep feeder to help give our young cows a boost before and after we wean them. We got the big round bale feeder so that we waste less hay and so that critters don't walk all over the hay, poop and pee on it. And we got the cradle feeder so that we don't waste hay by putting it on the ground. So in other words, if we had this barn packed full of nice fresh hay, we wouldn't want to sit it down in the mud. We'd sit it in the cradle feeder. Good stuff. Guys, please pound that like button, subscribe to the channel on your way out the door, and I hope you learned a little bit here today on the Stony Ridge Farm. It's starting to rain, and I'm going in the house. See you next time. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge.